two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? The money, slyly, slip it off, sir. You can who it is, the engine spoke in chorus. I know. Accidentally on purpose, the twins looked pained. Sir, you wouldn't be thinking we lost them on purpose. I'm not so sure, said the fat controller. Now then, which one of you is 57646? That, sir, is just what we can of mind. The fat controller looked at their solemn faces. He turned away. He seemed to have difficulty with his own. He swung round again. What are your names? Dono and Doogie, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which of you is which. Ach, you'll no get muckle help for him, sir. Why? He doesn't care who our names, sir. How could he? We only gained ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. He walked sternly away. And that, my friends, is the introduction to the Scottish twins, Donald and Douglas. These practical and peppy engines steamed their ways into the hearts and minds of Thomas fans everywhere in the 15th Railway Series book, The Twin Engines, which was published all the way back in 1960. 26 years later, these Caledonian-class steam engines made their first appearance on our TV screens. But their origin story was changed ever so slightly. The book consisted of four stories. Hello Twins, The Missing Coach, Breakman and The Deputation. The TV series adapted the final two stories into two episodes and gave a brief exposition dump for the first story, Hello Twins, in the first episode, Breakman. But The Missing Coach was never adapted, or so we thought. It turns out that The Missing Coach was in fact part of the original lineup for season 2, and during an interview with the Sodor Island fan site in 2008, director David Mitten confirmed that they did indeed film part of The Missing Coach. But halfway through filming, Brett Alcroft decided to cancel the episode. According to David Mitten, it cited a lack of action and a confusing plot as the reasons for its cancellation. Mitten also revealed that he had filmed negatives for this episode, but sadly passed away just after giving this interview in 2008. Again, it looked like that was all we would hear about this episode, but the Thomas fandom are indeed a crafty bunch. And in 2020, during what was quite a dark time for the world, there was a shining light for us Thomas and Friends fans. Leaked photos from the production of The Missing Coach. When these photos dropped, everyone went eight in our fandom. At last, we had something tangible to prove that this episode was, in fact, in production, as David Mitten had said. No more did we have to rely on rumour or hearsay. It was there for all to see. It was the first time that audiences had saw something new and original from classic Thomas since the early 2000s. Images such as ones of Duck and Donald at a station, the twins arriving at Tidmouth Sheds, the missing coach itself and the infamous tender switching scene were all there for us to salivate over. And as if that wasn't enough, in 2022, an early dialogue and visual script was leaked online. And it did indeed confirm that stories 1 and 2 were going to be adapted into one singular episode, with the title being confirmed as Hello Twins and not The Missing Coach, as many of us believed. This episode is one that's going to live in infamy amongst the Thomas fandom for a very long time. Many fans want to try and recover the negatives from David Mitten's family so that the episode can be finished in all of its true 1980s glory. Others think that Brett Alcroft was right. They should have cancelled production as the tender switching scene in particular was a very confusing plot device. But what do I believe? As I am not only a series 2 generation baby, but a classic era fan of Thomas and Friends. I've went back and forth over this for years, and even when I was writing my notes for this video, I was still undecided. It wasn't until I got halfway through my script that I did come to my decision. So this is why I believe that The Missing Coach shouldn't be released. Number one, it's not needed. It's safe to say that many fans of Thomas and Friends have been exposed to the world of Thomas in this order. 
TV series first, books second. That's not to say that that is the order for every Thomas fan. After all, the books were created first, but the episodes themselves are much more readily available on video, DVD, streaming sites, and it's also a much more stimulating media. So if you're wanting to entertain its target audience, which was babies, toddlers, and young kids, TV series is the best way to start. After all, I was born in 1987, and this was how I was first exposed to Thomas and Friends. My parents put on a VHS tape to keep me pacified, and I fell in love with it. And as such, I never knew that there were two additional stories in Donald and Douglas's origin story. I thought it was Breakman and the Deputation. It wasn't until I was a bit older, say pre-teen, young adult, that I discovered the Railway Series stories, and in turn found out that there were two missing. There were things that I found odd as a kid when watching Breakman, why the Fat Controller had a dislike to Douglas for what seemed to be no logical reason. But overall, it didn't affect the plot of the story. The only thing that was really missing was finding out that Douglas was indeed the stowaway and not Donald. So while finding out that these stories were in development was an interesting bit of information for me, it didn't necessarily add anything to their overall character arc in Season 2. Number 2. Alcroft was right. If you've watched any video on YouTube from the multitude of Thomas creators, you will hear the same thing. The plot of The Missing Coach is unnecessarily complex. But for the normies, let's break it down. In Hello Twins, we know that Donald and Douglas have arrived on Sodor to help the Fat Controller with goods work. But two engines turn up when only one is expected. They have no numbers, for some strange reason. And when they're asked what their names are, they cover their tracks by saying that they name themselves, so no one will actually know who they are. And while the Fat Controller knows they're at it, he keeps them both on the island until he can find out which one needs to be sent away. So the missing coach begins with the usual stuff. Donald and Douglas are helping Duck with the good work. They've had their numbers painted on their tenders. And when Gordon and Henry make fun of their whistles, they call them out on their b God, these two engines make me love being Scottish. Then we get told about this special coach. It's a coach that gets shunted from Gordon's 3.30 express train onto Thomas's train for passengers who want to travel on Thomas's branch line. Douglas takes on this shunting duty, but he's so worried about being found out that it is indeed him that's the stowaway, he forgets all about the coach. Thomas starts getting pissy about it not being there, because of course it's Thomas. The passengers cause an uproar, because of course they do, it's the island of Sodor. And in this situation, Douglas's driver decides that the engines should switch tenders. So Donald now has Douglas's tender, which is number 10, and Douglas has Donald's tender, which is number 9. But it is left uncoupled. So my interpretation of the plan was this. They want the Fat Controller to think Donald has a defect in his tender and can't take the goods train as planned. Douglas, already having to do his previous job of shunting the special coach, now also has to take on Donald's goods train. Being in a rush to complete both jobs, it would be quite logical that Douglas would make a mistake and forget to shunt said coach for Thomas's train. This would give Douglas a plausible alibi for forgetting this task and absolve himself of any major ramifications from the Fat Controller, such as being sent back to the other railway. However, the Fat Controller sees right through the wool that they're trying to pull over his eyes, and once he's pacified the passengers, he rips Douglas a new tender. And then at the start of Breakman, he rips both Donald and Douglas a new tender. Just writing this down was mind-boggling enough for me. So imagine trying to simplify this down for a four and a half minute story. No wonder Brett Alcroft pulled the plug on it. There are so many plot holes in this plan. For example, Donald and Douglas didn't have any nameplates on them, so the need to switch tenders in the first place is redundant. Douglas could have actually taken Donald's train, and that way Donald is actually there facing the Fat Controller. Donald could take the fall for his brother, because he's less anxious about being sent away, since he is the one that's meant to be there in the first place, so he doesn't need to worry as much about ramifications. The Fat Controller could have easily calmed the situation down by explaining to the passengers that there were two new engines on the island, there'd been a mistake, and they could have easily got another engine to shunt the special coach. Get it onto Thomas's train, they might be a bit delayed, but they could still go on the branch line. Hell, get Thomas to shunt the special coach. 
He made a big fuss and troublesome engines about tender engines not shunting, so what, is Tom's all of a sudden above shunting as well? Or even get someone like Percy or Duck to shunt the coach. Duck's been helping them anyway. Also, this is the first and last time in the entire Railway series that we hear about this special coach. It's a plot device for literally one story and is never mentioned again. If you factor in all of these complications, the redundancy of the missing coach plot itself and that it has no bearing on any stories going forward, not to mention that when the Fat Controller is considering who he's going to send back to the other railway, he's only thinking about everything that happens in the next book. The broken signal box from Donald and the spiteful brake band being destroyed by Douglas. Allcroft saved herself a monumental headache by trying to incorporate this into Season 2. The only thing that I would have done differently is not even put the episode into production in the first place, because it would have saved a lot of time and a lot of expense. Number 3. It isn't the first railway series story to be cut. This Railway series story is the most well-known story for being cut in the show because there is a plethora of evidence behind it. But it's not the only Railway series story to be cut from the show. Hell, it isn't even the only Railway series story to be cut from this season. Alongside Hello Twins, the plan was also to adapt two other stories for season two, Gordon Goes Foreign and Double Header. While Double Header eventually did get the adaptation treatment, in the season 3 episodes, Time for Trouble, Gordon Goes Foreign didn't make the cut. This was down to budgetary constraints. As it never went into production, there were no images to be leaked, no film negatives to be found, no scripts to be leaked online. The only thing that we have as proof was a note about the engine from the other railway being a modified version of Henry's Gage 1 engine with a different resin face and smoke deflectors on either side. And that is why it's not as sought after by the fandom. The missing coach has evidence that it was filmed, which is now widely available online. And the testimonial from the late great David Mitten only added to the hype. Although my interview with Michael Donnell confirmed that it never actually got to the music production stage, and we both agreed that it's very unlikely it will ever see the light of day. Number four, fan media. Again, referring back to my interview with Mr. O'Donnell, he told me that we would probably never get another episode of Thomas and Friends in its original guise. And at the time, I was in agreement, until Project Tiger Moth came along, a fan-made Thomas and Friends episode that was unlike anything we had ever seen before and probably will ever see again. This episode captured the essence of classic Thomas to a T, and I went on record saying that if anybody could make an adaptation of The Missing Coach, I believe that they could. And I still stand by that. But just because I believe that these creators can do it justice, doesn't mean there aren't a plethora of fan content creators who haven't tried to do adaptations of The Missing Coach. There are plenty of adaptations out there if you search The Missing Coach. And any railway series stories that never got adapted for the TV series. While it may not be anything like what we could have got from the original production team, it's not like we don't have any options out there to choose from. With this being said, if all of a sudden the original episode of Hello Twins with the missing coach was released to the masses, I would be knocking people down left, right and centre to get this episode. This is something that I have advocated for because if they were able to get the footage and cobble it together and make a rough cut of this episode, Fans would go absolutely crazy for it. There is money to be made here, Mattel. And I know that that is all you care about on your bottom line. But despite what I would love to see, I am content with what we've already got. The season two origin story of Donald and Douglas isn't lessened by the fact that we don't have this episode. What we have is still pretty damn good. And the characters of Donald and Douglas themselves are much more than just one or two missing stories. Their legacy in print and on screen is already very well established. Although my unpopular opinion is that I think the CGI series completely f***ed on their characters. But that's another story. Despite all the rumours, all the back and forth, all the Twitter leaks and the interviews, I still believe that the missing coach should stay missing. For now.